But let's start with the game that just wrapped up in Houston, Texas. Mexico beating Jamaica, just beating Jamaica 1-0 on the strength of a Gerardo Arteaga goal in the 69th minute. Herc, I feel compelled to start with you as we break down this game. What did you make of Mexico's triumph in their performance in the 1-0 uh, victory? A uh, gritty win. It could have uh, been very ugly for Mexico. Mm -hmm. Listen, you lose your team captain, your leader, the highest profile player you have. It's an emotional blow. That could have been it for them. A team without Memo Choa, a team without Henry Martin, a team without Chucky Lozano, a team that has a very new coach, very green coach, not a lot of positivity in camp. It would have been a very easy decision or very easy for this Mexican national team to pack it in. It's done. It's over. They didn't do that. Uh, correct to them. Listen, first half, they had six shots, right? To Jamaica, seven. Second half, 20. Completely different team. They grew with confidence, majority possession like we knew they would have. Took their chances, got their goal, sealed it up. And in the end, while Jamaica may have given them trouble in the first half, sans the offsides goal, you never really felt like Jamaica was really going to get there. And it, I kind of thought it was going to be a 1-1 game, but it wasn't enough. Mexico just was all over them, whether it was possession, whether it was shots, whether it was creation. Uh, they were the better team. Mexico deserving of three points for you, Shaka? Uh, yeah, uh, for certainly quality of chances. In terms of the balance of the game, I thought Jamaica started slowly, grew into it in, in, in the first half, and then started the second half really well without question, the better of the two teams. But I thought uh, Demari Gray's fitness, which was a concern coming into this tournament, he's only played three games in the last 10 weeks. Um, and as, as he faded, I thought Jamaica faded. And once they did, Mexico were able to take the game by, by the scruff of the neck. And to their credit, um, I, I thought a well-taken goal looked better at that point. I thought there'd be a change of momentum after the in particular after the goal, um, but, but it never came. And, and while I, I, can, I, I, I think Jamaica played its part in, in not being able to, to battle their way back into the game, um, credit Mexico, because as, as we'd been discussing, there was not a lot of expectation, or the expectation was pretty low for this Mexican national team. Um, but I, I thought they equipped themselves well over the 90. Aside from me screaming desperately <laughs> behind you, what did you make of uh, Mexico in this game? Well, I, I was unsure how they were going to come out because of the new generational change, um, you know, the personnel changes, uh, the somewhat lack of leadership. I mean, yes, um, with uh, Edson coming in as captain and then obviously getting injured was really unfortunate. So just the changes in the personnel for this tournament, it was a bit un unexpected um, and I was unsure of that. But, you know, Jamaica, I felt like they came out really strong. You know, the three up top um, uh, with Antonio and Nichols and... Um, and Gray, I think they did very well in, in wanting to get on the ball, to create uh, moments in the game where they could create opportunities and scoring opportunities, and also just the transitional moments. I thought their box defending was excellent and really prevented Mexico in the first half, those chances. And then second half, like everyone else has, has mentioned, that Jamaica didn't seem like they were going to get you know, those chances that they were creating in the first. Um, so Mexico, credit to them. They finished out the game. They finally got the goal, and then they defended very compact very consistent and then held up for the win that those stats that you just gave us there hurry are those your your personal stats or is that something official that's official okay Mexico had 20 shots in the second half no 20 so shots in general okay yeah. all right okay I was about to say I was watching a different game <laughs> what uh, was the difference in the second half Mexico versus first half Mexico for you well first of all before we get to what we consider to be sort of the better version of Mexico that we saw in the back end of the second half mm -hmm. You have to say that at the beginning of the second half, it looked like Jamaica actually had Mexico rattled. Jamaica for, I don't know, it must have been maybe five, ten minutes, they were actually willing to press Mexico higher up the field, and they were forcing turnovers, and Mexico couldn't quite get the possession in the positions that they wanted. They didn't quite know what to do, and they were turning the ball over in bad areas, and it is from one of those turnovers that eventually that goal is created, that after, after some people in the room that we were watching were celebrating and others were crying and yelling. <laughs> I'm not pointing the finger, but this guy. I and, think I actually left the room at that point. Yeah, I might have stormed yeah, yeah. out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it's offside, and, and, and it just felt like from then on, Mexico just kind of said, all right, enough is enough. We have to be the team that carries the rhythm of the game. We have to be the team that is able to possess the ball. We have to be the team that 
were expected to be against Jamaica in a tournament of this magnitude. And to their credit, and I, I'm going to single out a player, when Edson Alvarez goes off and there's question, oh, who's going to come in? Oh, I don't know. Edson Alvarez, what are we going to do? And you feel bad for the player, but it's an opportunity for somebody else to now come in and do a job. And I thought that Luis Romo was actually very good for Mexico, especially in the second part of the second half, in which he got on the ball a lot. His, his clarity and his ability to keep the ball and keep the ball moving and pass the ball and move again and pass the ball and move again, that allowed Mexico possession to get better as the half went on, and eventually they wore down Jamaica. The first 10 minutes of the, first, of the second half, it was all Jamaica. They just couldn't withstand it. They just couldn't sustain it. And because they couldn't sustain it, Mexico got a hold of the ball and eventually made a difference. We've talked a lot about the expectations around Mexico. They're obviously very high. Shaka, when you look at this game, do you see something Mexico can build on moving forward to perhaps have a successful tournament and maybe meet those expectations? Or is it a bad team beating a slightly worse team? Um, I'm a little bit unsure uh, about that because coming into this tournament, I, I said all along that I felt Jamaica had their issues and, and it was there for everybody to see in terms of injuries, um, in terms of an, an unsettled camp with Leon Bailey and every and, and his his histrionics. Let's just let's just leave it at that. Um, but more to the point, key players missing. I spoke about Damari Gray and his lack of game time. Um, no Andre Blake, seeing that Jamali Wade came in, and I, I thought was absolutely outstanding for, for, for Jamaica. But that was a concern coming in. And then Hilgrimson, I, I thought, made a couple of odd choices. Uh, Damien Lowe, left on the bench to start with. He has been so important for in, in, through the midfield for, for, for Jamaica. Um, so I am, as we sit right now, I thought that was f a far better performance from Jamaica than I was expecting. Far better. And if that is, 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 is the litmus test, I'm not sure whether that's because this Mexico team is far less than anything we, we'd, we'd come used to, or it was just a surprise from, from Jamaica, or a, a surprise to me that they really are this good. So I think as this, as this tournament goes on, we'll know a whole lot more about, about both these teams, because as of right now, I'm kind of thinking that between Jamaica and Mexico, they're the fourth and third and fourth best team in the group. I tell you what I do know, and this goes back to Jamaica and the coaching decisions. If you have Antonio on the field, yeah. you don't take him off. Yeah, when you you don't take him off ever. Well, you don't take him off when you need a goal, when you don't need a goal. You just don't take him off because he is physically a dominant player, one of the most dominant, if not the most dominant player in CONCACAF. And so... He is your source of danger. He is the guy that can be a presence inside the 18-yard box, and you're trailing late. And so who's, who's going to be able to get on a second ball? Who's going to be able to create or manufacture chaos by being inside that 18-yard box from Jamaica's perspective? It has to be Antonio, and I have no idea for the life of me how he gets taken off the field. Mm. Well, he does, and uh, Santiago Jimenez actually got taken off the field just before that, was, that Mexico That was surprising. Well. That was surprising because he got taken off minute 69. His first opportunity on goal was minute 64. Yeah, I think he came on the 68th and the goal fell in the 69th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and that's got to be an issue for Jimmy Lozano and this Mexican national team. When you have a goal scorer who's capable of scoring goals at the club level, Eredivisie, whether it's Europa League or Champions League, he scores goals for Feyenoord. But whenever he puts on that green jersey, he's with the Mexican national team, it seems to be his kryptonite. And a lot of that's not his fault. He's a player that needs to see the goal. He's not a back-to-goal type of nine. You need to facilitate a player like that, give him opportunities. He had his first opportunity on goal, minute 64. That's not enough. If he's going to be on the field, if this is Santi Jimenez's team, if it's his time, you've got to find a way to get him quality opportunities. They didn't do that. The opportunities, like they often do for the Mexican national team, come through other players, whether it's wide players or the midfield, or in this case, Gerardo Arteaga, uh, but it's never through the nine. And it hasn't been that way for quite some time, certainly for Santi Jimenez, whether it's a personal thing he's got to do to get himself going, or Jimmy Lozano, I believe, has to be the one to facilitate this player, uh, whether it's tactically or putting the right personnel on the field. Uh, it's a situation for him. What about Edson? How big a loss is that? Because it doesn't look like he's coming back anytime soon. Massive. It's your highest uh, profile player. It's the spiritual leader. It's the only guy that's been there, done that. He seems to be the only one that has any blood flowing through his veins. If there's a problem in the midfield, problem in the field, just in general, he's a guy who speaks up. He's a guy that defends his players, defends his teammates. Um, I really thought the, when he goes down, 
that that would have been the Jamaican national team putting their foot on the Mexican national team's neck and lights out. I really felt that would have been the case. Uh, that didn't happen. Maybe it's due to the personnel on the field for Jamaica in that midfield. Never mm -hmm. really tested that midfield. Never really made it a battle, a physical battle. Um, but to, as Ali uh, was alluding to, Luis Romo, to his credit, he was very good. Very good when he came on. He was very good at controlling the tempo. He set up the goal for Arteaga, his teammate uh, at Monterrey. Um, Right now against Jamaica, they didn't seem to miss Edson Alvarez the way maybe I thought they would miss him. But I think that's going to be an issue going forward. Al, you've been in big tournaments before. You know it's a seesaw. It's not all, you know, sunshine and roses. Well, including TST. Uh, uh, TST. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's a good point. At TST, you guys lost your first game, came back to win the million dollars. A little different here with Mexico. They don't yes. lose the first game, but they lose their captain. They lose their most accomplished player right now in, in the European game. How do you overcome that as a team? Yeah, I mean, you have to continue and play like you would normally play. You can't, you know, you can't just all kind of come crashing down together and, and really gloat about it because you have another game coming up and you have to immediately get that mindset and change that mindset and say, listen, we have a hole to fill. We're going to fill it and we're going to do what we always need to do and that's show up and, and, and play our best and hopefully come out with, you know, the next three points. But they do need to tidy up some of the details that we saw tonight. They have to, you know, minimize their mistakes uh, they have to really be a little bit um, more clinical in front of goal because they did create chances but the final pass um, you know wasn't good enough tonight so if they could do that um, and focus on the next game and what they can control as individual players then you know the, the bigger details will will sort itself out it, it felt and, and just going back to the Santi Jimenez conversation for a second it felt like this decision by Jimmy Lozano had been made on Thursday in to take him of, out at that time. In terms of when he was coming off the field. Because it didn't make sense, given the performance of Santi Jimenez, to take him off right then and there. Because he was actually beginning to get involved in the game. And the relationship with Quinones coming off the sidelines when he actually was playing more sort of in a central position, it felt like they now were having a connection. And if you're watching the game and evaluating processing information right then and there, you're seeing... Okay, Quinones is creating issues. He's now con connecting with Santi Jimenez. They're becoming dangerous. There's momentum with what they're doing. It, do it didn't feel like that was the moment to take Santi Jimenez, given the performance. If you were going to take him off, take him off earlier. Mm. But right then and there, for the last 10 minutes or so, there was a connection that hadn't appeared throughout the course of the match. There's obviously going to be at least one change to the Mexico lineup for the next game. We assume with Edson Alvarez out. If we think about the 11 that started tonight, do the other 10 guys keep their spot just because they won, or should there be some changes? I believe Jimmy, will, Jimmy Lozano will keep the same 11 going forward. Really? With the exception, yes, you're going to put in there uh, a Luis Romo, but this is... Romo did enough for you. Uh, Ale, you were convinced. Obviously, Herc, you agree. Romo should be the uh, replacement for Edson here. You don't have anybody else. Huh. You don't have another right. player that defensively can give you anywhere near the commitment or, or the level of play uh, that Edson Alvarez gave you. Uh, Romo's a little bit cleaner with the ball at his foot, or at his feet, excuse me. He, he has that vision going forward. A little bit more of an eight than a six. Correct. But, but at least gives you a little bit of defense responsibility. When you look into that bench, you're really tested for players that have bite. I would say Edson's the only player you have with bite in that midfield. Romo's a close second, but it's really far off. So if you're Jimmy Lozano, this is what you're going with. I don't think he makes any changes. Maybe, maybe at the back, more of a sit home right back in Israel Reyes, and you swap out Jorge Sanchez. But I think that's the only thing you move. You look well, at that lineup from a Venezuela perspective. Uh, you know well, that's the next opponent. I, that's, I, mean, I, I said that yesterday, and I, I look at the lineup, and I don't go... Well, we, we're really scared of this team. Not quite, because then I look at matchups, and this is just on paper. Maybe it plays out differently on the field, but you just mentioned Luis Romo, and while he was good today, he was good when he was able to control the tempo of the game. Well, what we saw from Venezuela today against Ecuador is that they'll get tied to you, and they'll make it physical, and they're not going to allow you to just play the game at your tempo, and Ecuador is not going to allow them to do that either. Uh, Caicedo will get on top of you, and you're looking a level of athleticism that is required to play in that middle of midfield against teams like Venezuela and Ecuador, and I'm just not quite sure that Mexico has that. In fact, I know that they don't. Luis Romo, when he has the ball at his feet, great. But when he has to chase around, let me just tell you, he's not that quick. Mm. 
and, and the physicality is not quite there. And so Mexico, if indeed they're going to be successful against both Venezuela and Ecuador, they have to get that ball moving and they have to get that ball moving with quality and speed. If they do that, they'll be all right. But if you force Luis Romo to defend or going to tackle so you, or get tight, I think Mexico are in trouble. You know, one thing really quickly that Jamaica didn't take more advantage of is for as big as Cesar Montes is as a center back, for Johan Vasquez playing in the Serie A, used to dealing with physical forwards, they're not very good at dealing with crosses. They're not very comfortable at being physical. When Jamaica was physical, there was problems that were presented, second balls that they could never get to, dealing with crosses. While it was offside, Mikel Antonio on that one, uh, the goalkeeper himself, Julio um, Gonzalez, not feeling comfortable coming out. You could take advantage of that. And if you're Venezuela, you've got a forward that's very physical, knows what it's like to play against Mexican opposition and take advantage of said Mexican opposition, you could take advantage of a back line like that. That's a worry for Jimmy Lozano. Shaka, since Herc mentioned it, Julio Gonzalez, the goalie, just his third cap for the national mm -hmm. team. A huge stage, Copa America. How'd you rate his performance? I, I thought he did everything that could be asked of him. I'm saying that he wasn't overly tested. I, as, as we said right now, I can only really think of one save down to his left in the second half that, that really tested him. But, but other than the disallowed goal, I'm not sure that Jamaica provided too much of a, too, too, too much of a threat. But if you're coming into a big tournament like this with a lot of expectation or at the very least a lot of pressure and not a lot of experience under your belt, that's exactly the kind of game you want. You want to be able to just take your time, do things simply, not be overly bothered. Um, one major test, which, which well, major-ish test, which, which you, you meet quite, quite easily, and, and you build from there. So I, 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 from a, a goalkeeping perspective, I thought Gonzalez did everything that could be asked of him, and you take, you take it from there. As a backline player, how would you feel in that situation? Major tournament, goalie's getting his first real big-time minutes, and what do you do to kind of help them out? Well, I think you don't do anything that you wouldn't normally do, even in club. I mean, it's just another game. Yes, there's an, a, you know, an elevated level where you have to perform well to move into the next rounds, and um, there's a little bit more pressure because it's you know, one step up with the national team. Um, but you shouldn't be doing anything that you wouldn't normally do day to day. Um, and, and I think that, yes, uh, he did perform well uh, for what was asked of him. And um, just like Shaka said, and, and uh, we move on into the next game. And he can hopefully build that confidence moving into the next game. And the back line can obviously play with more confidence, knowing that he's back there controlling it and doing everything he can in order for them to be successful. Remind me, Shaka, was it you that said that these are probably the two worst teams in the group based yeah. on what you saw? You agree with that? From what we have seen so yeah. far? Yeah. I'm still only 90 minutes from all four teams, but... Well, let, let, hold on. Not, not, not from what we saw. I, I, coming into this tournament, I, 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 looking at this group before anybody in this group uh, kicked a ball, you, you, you think Ecuador uh, are, are going to run away with it, and then all of a sudden Venezuela come and turn them over. Um, so now all of a sudden you, you have to kind of readdress that. So I, I think this game was important for both, that if you do want to get out of this group, you have to go, you have to go on and win it. Um, but given Venezuela's performance against coming into the, the runaway favorite to top the group, you, you now think that, yeah, this, this was third and fourth. If you are to get out, and Mexico, the, Mexico, the ones who put themselves in, in that position, you had to win it. You agree? I don't know if I agree. Um, I, think they, I think, excuse me, the Venezuela versus uh, Ecuador game was conditioned by an early red card that changed the game. Easy now. Yeah. Uh, let's not take credit away from Venezuela. <laughs> no, Venezuela was very good. Read but, carefully. But let's, let's look at why we're giving Venezuela so much credit because of the way they turned things around. But there were times in that game where they were a man down. They were losing that game. Mm -hmm. And their midfield, while they were very good in the second half, was getting ran over by Ecuador. It wasn't until they found that goal with the great substitutions that Batista made that changed the game. The two players that came on changed the game. Both players scored a goal that you started seeing a Venezuela take control. But if Venezuela let the Mexican national team have the ball and just dictate the pace in SoFi Stadium with that crowd they're going to have, I, that's, I don't think it's as cut as dry as Mexico is in the bottom half of that group. I really think it's a toss-up game. I really think they have some problems uh, lined up against them. But certainly the intangibles of the individual players that Venezuela have uh, are more than the individual players that Mexico has, and that gives them the edge. All right, so there we have it. Uh, Ecuador, Venezuela, Mexico, and Jamaica. Group B at the Copa America 2024. And uh, as it sits right now, Mexico and Venezuela. Mm. The right side of the desk here, uh -huh. uh, holding down the top spots in Group B. Good time to remind you, many of the people on this desk are often on 
ESPN FC, a, day, a show you can see daily right here on ESPN+. Plus. Don't miss a single episode with Kay, Dan, and the rest of the crew over in Connecticut.